Welcome to the Boyne Music Festival. My name is Jessie and I'm here in the enchanted forest at Townley Hall. Forests are magical places full of fairies and sprites and most excitingly of all, stories. So today we're going to explore musical stories all about nature. And if you have some pens or paints, you might like to draw some pictures, maybe the instruments that you see, or maybe some pictures from the stories that you hear. My friend Maria is inside Townley Hall, drawing her own picture of today's musical stories. We'll take a peek throughout the concert and see how she's getting on. The first nature piece we're going to hear is by a man called Beethoven from 200 years ago. Beethoven was a famously grumpy man, but the one thing he loved was nature. In fact, he once said, No one can love the countryside more than I do. I love a tree more than a man. This piece is from Beethoven's Sixth Symphony, the Pastoral Symphony, which is all about the countryside. And the first movement that we will hear has this famous melody, Let's go explore in the forest. And that pattern repeats over and over again in different ways all the way through the music. And in nature, patterns repeat over and over again, like the petals on a flower or the rings on a tree or the patterns that you might see on a leaf. Maybe you might like to go and get some leaves and draw the patterns while we listen to the first movement of Beethoven's Sixth Symphony.
wow, there were so many nature patterns in that music. How many instruments did you see? Why don't we go inside and meet the musicians and their instruments? Hello, my name is Rita. This is Ashling, and we both play the violin. And here are our violins. This is my violin. It's very, very, very old. It was built over 200 years ago. It's actually five years older than Townley Hall. It's got four strings. I've got the bow and the hair on the bow is made from the tail of a horse. Hello there, I'm Paul and this is my nephew, John, and we play the viola. The viola is in fact the original stringed instrument. It's a little bit bigger than a violin and a little bit smaller than the cello. The wood in this viola was still in the enchanted forest back in 1717. Hello, my name is Julianne and this is Jacqueline and we both play the cello. The cello is even bigger than the viola, as you can see. In fact, it's so big that we can't play under our chin. We have to put it in the ground. The cello is also much lower than the violin and viola and you can even feel the vibrations in the ground from the low sound it makes. That's our lowest note, the C. It's time to go on an adventure to find some musical stories. So put on your boots and your coat and we're going to listen to a silly march to help get us there. Are we ready to march? Let's go! found our first story and it's about a frog. My friend Naomi has a really good story about a frog and there's some amazing music to go with it. Let's have a listen. A princess was out in the garden one day playing with a golden ball when all of a sudden she dropped it into a fountain which was so deep she couldn't see the bottom of it. Just as she was about to start crying, a big old frog popped up beside her and said, Princess, I can fetch your golden ball, but only if you take me back to the palace and let me eat from your plate and sleep on your bed. Now, the princess wasn't too keen on the idea of a pet frog, but she agreed. And so, splash, the frog dove into the fountain and whoosh, he came back up with the golden ball in his mouth. The princess was delighted, grabbed her ball and ran away without a second thought. The next day, at dinner time, there was a knock on the palace door. And when the princess opened it, there was the frog who said, Princess, you forgot to take me with you. I am starving. What's for dinner? And so the princess took the frog inside and let him eat from her plate. But at bedtime, when the cold, slimy frog tried to jump on her bed, yuck, she grabbed him and threw him against the wall and wham! The frog turned into a prince. The prince explained that he had been turned into a frog by an evil fairy, but that now the spell was reversed. And so they laughed and laughed. And for many years afterwards, they enjoyed telling people the story of how they first met.
clever frog. But hey, Billy, what happened to your cello? It's huge! Jesse, you know this isn't a cello, this is a double bass. And it's the biggest instrument we have here from the string family, and it's made from the biggest tree in the enchanted forest. And in fact, it's so big that my lowest note is an octave lower than the cello. Here it is. Frogs are really good at hopping. But do you know who else is good at hopping? Hares! Our next piece of music and story is about a hare and a... <gasps> a hedgehog! Naomi is going to tell us this story and again we're going to listen to music by William Balcom. Listen out to Billy on his big double bass. Hedgehog was out visiting his turnip field one morning when he saw Hare, who was combing his ears and looking bored. Good morning, Hare, said Hedgehog. Hare sniffed. What are you doing running around out here this morning on those crooked little legs of yours, he said. Hare, as you can tell, was extremely rude. So, Hedgehog challenged Hare to a race. They would meet in half an hour and run along the furrows in the field. Ha! You're on, said Hare. I will definitely win. So Hedgehog hurried home and called out to his friend. We're going to trick Hare and teach him a lesson. Remember those matching t-shirts we got at the theatre last month? Let's both wear them. You'll hide at one end of the field, and I'll be at the other, and silly old Hare won't know the difference and think we can run faster than him. And so, the hedgehogs got dressed in matching t-shirts, and it's true that they did look very much alike indeed. Half an hour later, hedgehog met Hare in the field, and they each took their places next to each other in two separate furrows. Ready, set, Go! And Hare took off, his ears flying in the wind. But Hedgehog only took a couple of steps and then ducked down and hid in the furrow. Before Hare got to the end of the field, Hedgehog number two popped up at the other end and called out, I'm already here. What? cried Hare. That can't be. Let's race again. And so they did, but the same thing happened. Before Hare reached the end of the field, Hedgehog popped up and said, I'm already here. They raced 73 more times. And Hedgehog always won until Hare fell down exhausted and had to admit defeat, and he promised never to make fun of hedgehogs and their legs ever again. spot the silly march music coming back at the end of that story and did you know that my friend Naomi is also a really good singer she asked could she sing a song to you with her friend Deirdre on the piano all about nature and maybe you could paint or draw a picture about the nature that you hear her singing about Keep 
religious because it stands for all to see and for a long, long time just as the words I'll always love you impulsively appear in the dark sky and we are happy and stick by them like a couple of Thanks Naomi, thanks Deirdre. That song was based on a poem by Frank O'Hara. Maybe you'd like to write us a nature poem. But now it's time to march off and find our next musical story. Ready, come on! I've marched all the way from the enchanted forest to the River Boyne to see if I can spot our next musical story. <gasps> there it is! Did you see it? This musical story is also based on a poem and the poem is called The Trout. Schubert wrote the music to have lots of shimmery, watery sounds and he captures the story of a man enjoying his afternoon looking out on a river and loving watching a trout splash and play in the water until a fisherman comes along and catches it. Schubert loved painting pictures with music and you can hear the water bubbling and the trout splashing in this music and in this version you'll hear a piano quintet of a violin, viola, cello and Billy on the double bass and Deirdre on the piano painting these musical pictures.
Could you hear the way Schubert painted a musical picture of the trout splishing and splashing in the bubbly river? But now it's time to do our final silly march and see what our last musical story is. Come on, let's go! Our last musical story is about an animal that we can't always see, but we can usually hear. This is a song called Little Jazz Bird by George Gershwin, and Naomi is going to sing and Deirdre will play the piano. The song is about a little bird who flies into the city and into a jazz club and she thinks the music is so cool that she has to fly home and tell her friends all about it. Into a cabaret one fatal day A little songbird flew Found it so very gay He thought he'd stay just to get a bird's eye view when he heard the jazz band playing he was happy as a lark to each measure he kept swaying and he stayed till after dark then back to the land he knew thrilled through and through he getting on. Wow, Maria, that looks brilliant. How are your enchanted forest pictures looking at home? We've come to the end of our musical adventures. Thanks for joining me in the enchanted forest and thanks to the amazing musicians who played for us inside Townley Hall. I really hope that you've enjoyed our magical musical stories. Thanks for listening.